Well, not bad. Not bad at all. Arm wrestle a little low. Height's about right, though. Very, it's comfy. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait. I gotta remember when I press that start button. Hello and welcome again to the wrestling kind of review and recap show. I am the one and only Hobo Tom. And there'll be some programming notes towards the end of this because a lot of stuff's gonna be happening soon. But most importantly, what happened today, besides me getting a pile of money and a boatload of work to do, and a nice new. Oh, you can't see that. Actually, really comfortable, though. I'm not going to get waffled, but I think the only thing I have to do is tighten that spring a little bit. Arm wrestle a little lower than I like, and it only sits really like an inch or two lower. But my knees aren't, my knees are pretty good. So this is pretty good. Good purchase for about 30 bucks. Oh, I have to make that lose list too. Shoot. That's a whole other issue though. And six hours. So I'm, enough about that. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Uh, this was a pretty interesting show. Um, I kind of caught bits and pieces of it at the time only because I had to work and I could only see kind of snippets of it. So this is going to seem kind of disjointed a little bit. Um, but this is the day Biggie returns. And that's always a good thing. Um, they have a, they have a big celebration in the ring. Biggie's there. Um, Kofi Kingston's there. Xavier Woods is there. Hey, Spa, were you there? Or she is. Um, again, they kind of welcome Big E back. It's pretty cool. Then Sam, then Kevin Owens comes out. Dastardly Kevin Owens. Then Sami Zayn came out, comes out. And that sets up a match later in the night for Sami Zayn versus Kofi Kingston. But then in the background, our truth. People know who you are. If you want to hide the fact that you're the 24-hour-7 champion, which is the new belt, and I have kind of mixed feelings about it. I understand why they did it. I, I think it's good that you're seeing some of your wrestler, your, your maybe not top-tier wrestlers, in the spotlight... They could have designed the belt better, though. Honestly, this guy could have designed a better-looking belt than that. It's just a real bronze plate that says 24 slash 7 on it. And it's that ugly Arabia green. My fear, when I first saw that last night, it's like, oh, they're going to unveil the Saudi Arabia belt. But I guess not. And it's being used story wise, so that's always a good thing. Um, so big, so our truce, the the twenty four seven champion, kind of hiding from everyone, and he has the most ridiculous disguise in the fact that he dresses up like a woman. <laughs> he pulls out this big broad somewhere. <laughs> I don't. I th I think like the innuendo was that this is that was um. Mandy Rose's bra. But that was just funny. Um, so let's see here. So again, here for our truth. Uh, the B team. Oh, wait, that's a little bit later. So I forget where things go. So I'll take my notes as is. Uh, there's a Liv Morgan sign. Live life. Yeah, that's what she used to say. I wonder where she is. Maybe Ruby Riley challenge for the 24-7 both. That would be pretty cool. Oh, wow. This actually keeps me fairly upright. I don't... doesn't give a lot, which is which is good. Because the other one I get waffle butt from. So with this, though, um, let's see here. My notes are all kind of goofy. Oh, you have Andrade, so... If Sami Zayn, I mean, he just looks confused because people are chasing our truth all over the place. Um, Elias is there. I think 
the first match was a rematch from the Money in the Bank. It was Andrade Cien Almas versus Mustafa Ali. I'll always say their two names because that's the way you're supposed to talk to people. Wow, I wonder if I put... Oh, wow, I can even do that, too. Actually, this shirt's really cool. You just have to get... It's one of those things you just have to get used to. Like, this is how you're, like, supposed to sit. Wow. Um, but this was a really... F oh, wow, this was a fun, flippy match. Andrade, again, he hit the Tranquilo. Um, and Andrade, the reverse Rana, there was top rope stuff going all over the place. Action packed nonstop. If they did an arm bar, it was so that they could whip the guy off the ropes, or it was a me or it was an arm bar takeover. Really fun stuff. Selena Vega did get involved a little bit. I never realized that Andrade was that strong. I mean, he was just tossing all the around. I mean, I think he threw him over the timekeepers into the timekeepers area. Which is kind of like quasi separated from like the, the barricade and stuff or from the people there. I mean, oh wow. Um, Ali did pick up the win with a roll up. Again, Andrade's getting to be that overly arrogant heel. And Selena Vegas not, has, has to reel him back in to, and get him more focused. They focus on Andrade. Well, he's a lot more focused than he was um, Andrade Cien Almas in NXT when, when he was like just kind of tranquilo party guy, which is still pretty cool, though. Um, but I, I was shocked that they, they could actually do this match. Ali got broken at the Money in the Bank match. So this, folks, this is what a surf and turf quality match should look like. And then, let's see here. So that was really good. So then I think, get back to everything else. Um, there's a Bailey interview. Bailey's the champ. Oh, it's um, uh, the, it's the difference between Bailey, Bailey, between Bailey the champ versus Bailey the hugger. So, so we'll see how that plays out. Again, Elias eventually shows up. Again, these notes are all kind of disjointed. I kind of caught it in bits and pieces of it. So I do apologize for that. Let me score paper and keep active. And keep on getting paid even though YouTube does not pay me yet. Let me choose one. I choose you. And ooh, I, know what, I know what to give that paper. That looks like a two all day long, folks. That next one's probably good. Ooh, I could do this. I always forget about this stuff. So that was really fun. Um, then we have Carmella versus Mandy Rose. And it's a very special Mandy Rose. It's an all red everything Mandy Rose, except for her hair color, which is still, still blonde. It looks like she, she broke into e all red everything, even Marie's wardrobe. Hey, those those two those those two wax not much. Um, and then Boo Man Boo Sonya Deville's in the corner. Boo Sonya Deville. So, but this was actually a really fun match. Um, Carmella just starts off really hot. She starts to beat down Mandy Rose. Uh, Mandy Rose eventually pulled out by Boo Sonya Deville. Um, eventually, Carmella gets Mandy Rose back in the ring. Uh, just, just, just gives her the super kick. Sonya Deville gets back on top of the ring. She Carmella just pulls her in the ring. Really awkward, kind of. Hip toss arm bar thingy into the ring. Uh, so it starts to beat down Boo Sonya Deville, which is what Boo Sonya Deville deserves ever since she beat my princess, Kimberly. Um, he kicks her in the head then. Uh, who was it? Mandy Rose got a little offense, but eventually the B team show up. They, they go after R Truth because R Truth. He's comedic gold because this 
funny if this is what they're going to do with the 24-7 belt, which is kind of what they did for a spell with the Hardcore Championship when Crash Holly had it. They had him, like, defending it in, like, airports, hotel rooms, uh, like like a Chick-fil-A fun place with, like, the ball pit, jungle gyms. It was fun. So, so this is also pretty fun. Um, our truth just runs in the ring. Everyone runs in the ring after him. It's a death that finished, baby. And wow. I'll be lost. Because I didn't know what happened there. But this was a good match. And eventually Carmelo like, gets on top of our truth because you see our truth running piggyback with Carmella on his back. The match itself was a can of soup. But all the antics involved were just so funny. And Corey Graves called Byron Saxon a sissy. And he, the, the look on their faces was priceless. Because after he called him a sissy, Byron just looked sad. But Corey Graves is like, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, and then we had uh, Sami Zayn versus Kofi Kingston, surprisingly for which was not the main event, but but you'll you'll see why. Um, so this was set up earlier, and eventually someone jumped Big E because Big E was clutching his leg. I don't know if they said it was a cramp or I guess when towel, so they know he just had I think knee surgery. I don't know exactly what happened with his knee. I know it was one of those things. I think it was just like. He never got anything looked at and just kind of got beat up after a long time. Now I only have 12 minutes left. So, Sami Zayn takes on Kofi Kingston. And again, this was actually a pretty fun match. I mean, it's weird seeing the night and day dichotomy, big word for you folks, between Monday Night Raw versus Tuesday SmackDown. Not something right, at least. But, I mean, this was a fun match. I mean, Kofi was selling the fact that he was agitated, distracted. Oh, I forgot to mention this, but um, in the beginning, when Sami Zayn was, was talking to Kofi Kingston, whenever, whenever Sami Zayn wants to say something, you hear, oh, and Sami Zayn would be like, well, this is, oh, that was funny, though. I mean, they, they have to bring back Yaki Saxon music to the WWE. That's the only thing that could have actually made anything better. Um, then, this chair is just, it's a little bit more wobbly than the other one. That's okay. I can tighten that spring in the, in the back. But that's actually the seat itself doesn't give that much. But yet it's padded. Back feels good, too. Just I have to get used to it. But again, this was a really fun match. The, the story of this match is that Kofi Kingston is more worried about what happened to Big E. But Sami Zayn really can't get off his moveset because Kofi always has the answer for Sami Zayn. Um, eventually, Kofi did hit the Trouble in Paradise kick on Sami Zayn, pins him. And I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. And it was they could do really no wrong. It was, I think, for me, just a little short. And they could have had probably more play with Kevin Owens and Xavier Woods, maybe. At least go to a backstage segment, unless I, unless I missed something, which is entirely possible. But, I mean, for the most part, the match itself was a cheeseburger match. Then Dolph Ziggler shows up. The heck did Dolph Ziggler come from? Oh, wait a second. I dropped my mic again. I need a better mic. Or one that's not broken. So Dolph Ziggler showed up and just started a wailing on Kofi. Whoa, he has some pence up anger issues there. And then Paul Eamon teased the cash in before. So, whoa, what's going on here, folks? So again, this was actually a really wrestling. This was a really wrestling pack card. 
Wow. Um, then you have um, Lacey Evans and Charlotte Flair takes take on Bailey and Becky Lynch. It was a pretty fun match. And Charlotte starts the match. Lacey Evans, she has to realize that the heel, that there's something called heel hubris. Because if you tag yourself in, eventually you're just going get, to get, get whooped on. She's like, oh, you softened up. It's my turn. Eh, tag. Rock goes, tag. Charlotte out, you in. Uh, it was a fun match, though. I mean, Becky, she, she hit kind of everything. Uh, Bailey's definitely looking strong. I mean, they made the champs look strong, which is really good. Becky's doing a lot more top rope stuff. I don't know if Seth, <laughs> if she's been learning a lot from Seth, or or, or someone else like Seth. <coughs> Sorry, folks. Let me have a sip of cola for a moment and clear my throat. Or let me clear my throat. Da 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 da. But yeah, it was really fun. I mean, Charlotte teased a lot. I mean, everyone kind of got their moves set off. I mean. The one move Lacey Evan has, the woman's right, and I think Becky kind of flopped out of the ring for that. It was good. Again, like this, it's really hard to screw up. This is another good quality cheeseburger match. And then I guess the only low point is they started to really talk and stress things about the... Super Showdown coming into Saudi Arabia. Um, they list some of the matches. Um, uh, there's going to be, I guess, an Evolution get together. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the match card looks like. That's not for another couple of weeks. So I'm, sh I'm sure they're going to tell us more as that keeps on going. It's five minutes. Seven minutes. So with all that being said, um, the final match of the evening is Roman Reigns versus Elias. And again, this was another kind of fun match. But it's not too much bad to say about this. About this episode of SmackDown. It was good. I, I, I feel it's it's bad to say it was nothing great, but that did have its moments. It was just really darn good. It wasn't great. It was far from terrible, though. So it was a really darn good show. Shane introduces Elias. So then the match is Roman Reigns versus Elias. And it's actually a lot longer, which I'm really thankful for, than their Money in the Bank match. Wait, this is, like, it's been a couple times WWE's done this. Is there some formula they're using? We have a really short, lousy match. We're going to make up for it for TV. What about all the people that pay? Oh, wait, I don't pay. I don't care what they, I don't care about them. But it was a really fun match. Um, Roman Reigns started off really hot. Um, eventually, Elias got the upper hand by doing the heel thing. Uh, Roman Reigns got to the outside, hit the drive-by on him. Um, teased the Superman punch. I uh, missed that, but Elias was on the outside. So Elias gets in the ring first. As Roman Reigns is coming in, Elias does the heel thing and kicks the rope. So that, so that rope ropes hit Roman's in his reins. And then it's Elias' turn to, to have a good beating on to Roman Reigns. Um, it was fun. They started to do top rope stuff. I don't think I've ever seen Roman Reigns do. I think Elias tried to do something from the... Or had Roman Reigns in electric chair position after Roman Reigns tried to do a rope Samoan drop. Again, fun stuff. I, I always appreciate when wrestlers do, do different stuff. Um, eventually Shane, again, puts, he starts being a distraction. Roman Reigns drive-by kicks him. Um, I, I know for one of those distractions, Shane put Elias' foot on the ropes. Roman Reigns eventually does win. He pins Elias after a spear. Um, 
after, of course, Shane tried to distract the ref, try to get the guitar in, and it didn't work. And then Shane gets gets a Superman punched. But then all of a sudden, so that match, it was fun. Roman Reigns won. It was a good, again, another quality cheeseburger match. But then um, uh, Drew McIntyre runs in the ring. Levels. Levels, big, levels the big dog. And that was the show. And again, I'll tell you what, it was a really fun show. Even though my notes are kind of spotchy because they had a couple other things. They had a Lars Sullivan promo. I think I missed another promo somewhere. That was it. Um, as far as programming notes, so I am done until the 25th, this Saturday. You have a chance to see this guy, Hobo Tom, here in Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center for NXT. I'll probably get there probably about 6.30. I'm really hoping because it's Memorial Day weekend that they'll have some bigger name stars, and hopefully I can get my picture of Candice LeRae. Again, so this way this can go up on the door of wrestling. I guess it's not too creepy to keep a picture of another man's wife. In your office. And then I'm going to do a recap of Double or Nothing because Double or Nothing is the same day as a live event. I'd rather see the live event. People would rather see the live event too. Monday night's a double show. It's going to be the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League for Memorial Day Madness. And then Monday Night Raw. Tuesday SmackDown, and I think that's going to be it for that week. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Everyone have a